Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all had a great week. Today, what I'd like to do on the bottom, you'll know, you've seen in the video, I put blocking in, and I put the blocking in right at the seam of the plywood. You got to put blocking in to help the joists be able to carry the load so they don't curve on you. As the load bears on them, the grain of the wood will cause them to deflect in a certain way or another. So you put blocking to stop that from happening. So that everything coming down on the load stays true, the, the, the joists stay true and that load is put on to the strain of the most strength, most strong fibers of the wood. Okay, so this floor though, I don't want to do blocking. I don't want to block off these joist spaces so that if I ever need to fish pot lights in in the future or uh, when I run my piping for my uh, uh, bathroom or my drains or whatever, I want this space open. So I want to get, I'm going to use a herringbone blocking. So the easiest way to do a herringbone blocking, you want it in the middle of the space. So you measure your space and you divide it in half. This line here, I don't know if you can see it, is my halfway point. And then you measure the depth of your joist space. So the depth of mine is nine and a quarter because I've used two by tens. Well, nine and a quarter is great uh, as a full maximum herringbone length right from the top of the joist above to the bottom of the joist there. But I don't want to be that close, especially since I've already installed the subfloor. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll take a half an inch off of that so that it ends up being like a quarter inch down and a quarter inch up by the time it crosses the distance. So from that line that you made there, you measure out, I guess you, you can't see the tape from your side of the camera, but you measure out, so I am i don't like to use the end of a fish of a, a tape because these move back and forth for whether you're clipping on or whether you're pushing up against, and a lot of the times they stiffen up or get gunk stuck in them and they don't move, so you don't get an accurate measurement. So I'll hold it at 18 and three quarters, a half inch, less nine and a quarter and then I make my mark at 10 and so that distance there is the distance this box here is the exact same as this box here or excuse me this box here so now I have a reference point that I can use for marking lines so I got to do the same on the next joist. I've already got my half way mark marked up there. Hold it at 18 and three quarters. Mark at 10 inches. That gives me an eight and three quarter inch distance. Make those two lines as well. And then you can take your material that you're going to use. And of course mine is way too long for the building. Well, maybe on an angle it'll work. So the top of your piece you want to put on the outside line here so that you're inside the distance of the two lines that you made. And then your other one, oh, my ladder's in the way. So top on the mark and then bottom on the inside of the other one. So that there now gives me the two angles. All I need to do is scribe the top of the wood. And that's my exact lines that I need to cut to be able to have my herring bones fit there. So little trick for you guys, instead of trying to calculate everything out, you can just do some quick measurements and draw some lines and now once I make that I've got a template for all the rest of them.
That's not good. Why is this one so much higher than that one? Well guys, I don't know if you'll be able to hear me. It's a little windy today still again. The sun is shining. I finished a few hours of work. That's it for me. I gotta head back home and get prepared for the sleep study I gotta go for tonight. So thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great week and I'll see you next weekend. Through the magic of YouTube, I'll be right back. But you know how the setup goes. Again, please like and subscribe. See you all soon.
This is my favorite solution to a, after a hard day's work. So here's my double joist hanger that I need to put around this stair opening joist to hold it in place. When you install a double joist hanger you need to use the appropriate uh, nails. I'm not really sure why but it's all part of the engineered process so it was 10 bucks for that box. There's a 120 in it. going to be in the way of my stair stringer. That one. There's one side done, I'll do the other side now. Are you going to need nails?
I'll be right back. I'll go get my nail bag. Would it be called the Widowmaker? Yep. Why is it called a Widowmaker? Because <coughs> it's not attached or anything and it can fall. And then what would that do? Kill you. And then you'd be. And you'd widow your wife. Right? Uh-huh. Now is it a widowmaker? Well, it's got that race holding it. <laughs> Should I move again? I think it's okay. Here? A little bit further. Okay. Crowbar. Are you unscrewing something? Watch this too before it's going to fall. You know what this is? No. It's a chalk line. So it draws chalk. On a line. You got that knife in your pocket? You got one? George. Yeah? that chalk? This is chalk. Blue chalk. It's all over everything. So the chalk line lets you draw it straight. It just dropped all over. Let's you draw a straight line over long distances. Kind of like a tape measure. It's kind of like a tape measure, but for drawing lines. You can just wipe that off. No, because it'll get all over my hand. Okay. So what you do is you you put it on your line, or you get your apprentice to hold it on the line, and then drag it out so that you're away from where you want to make your line. Because you see how it leaves a little dust trail. Yes. I'll probably have to do this twice, I will. It's brand new, so you'll have to pre-chalk the chalk line.
And then I hold it on this mark and you hold it on that mark or you use that thing to hold it on that mark. Are you on that mark? Like the what mark? The pencil mark. Uh, I'm guessing I don't see it. I can't even take this off if I want to. I don't, I don't see a pencil mark. It looks like a little triangle or a pointer. Yep. I'm on it. I'm in the middle of it. You're on it? Yep. And then you hold it tight and you snap it. And then you got a line. Unless your chalk line is brand new. Online? Yep, I don't see the triangle. Kidding. Give me the battery off the impact gun, please. You mean the nail, like screwdriver there? Yep. Yep. Last night it got too dark to film, so put my super light on, started cleaning up some more stuff. I got uh, this piece here to fill in. There was a three quarter of an inch gap there that I needed to fill in, so I filled it in there and. I had already done the one on this end and then at the top along here and here you can see from the end I had to put another 2 by 12 next to the LVLs to bring it out even and then another uh, I laminated let me see if I can zoom into it I put a half inch sheet of OSB piece of OSB along behind there and then another 2 by 12 to make it even with the deck above so now we're all squared up and we've got some rigidity underneath the floor to be able to allow that second floor wall to go on that second floor wall is going to be the wall that's going to hold the load of the high side of the rafters so I wanted to make sure it had solid wood underneath there so yeah got a couple more small things to tidy up you've probably seen that I put some Tyvek on last night and a couple sheets of uh, wallboard but I'll probably put the installation of that wallboard into the next video I think I want to try to cut my door in because once I put the sheeting on it's gonna be a lot harder to cut it in after and it's gonna I have to close in the access that I made over here I'll have to close that in to be able to put the sheeting so I might as well cut the door in and then I think I'd like to build the stairs too and then that way I can get up to the second floor easier so I'm gonna keep on keeping on thanks for uh, staying tuned and we'll see you guys uh, real shortly <laughs>